it's, it's an incredible story, the Easter story. And really to help you understand it, we need to read the tail end of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, because they all include different parts of the story. So I'm going to seek to sew them together today. Steve talked to us last week about Palm Sunday as they rode into Jerusalem. I want to try and think what it must have been like for the disciples because they believed in Jesus as their Messiah, as the Son of God. And maybe when they rode into Jerusalem, they were waiting for him to set up a kingdom. We know that. Maybe they thought this is the moment. It's all about to happen. The kingdom's about to be set up. Jesus never did work things out exactly the way they thought. Because after the singing, he goes into the temple. And in the temple uh, where they get ready for the sacrifice, the people involved were working fiddles, cheating people. And Jesus got so cross with them. He said, this is my father's house, should be a house of prayer. And you've made it into a den of thieves. And he went and turned over the money tables and he shooed all the animals out. Not quite the way to set up a kingdom. So the disciples had these incredible highs and maybe some lows. And as time went on, the disciples said to Jesus, it's nearly Passover, what are you going to do? So Jesus said to John and Peter, I want you to go into the city and you're going to find a, a bloke carrying some water. When you see him, follow him. And when you arrive at the house, say to him, the master needs the room for the Passover feast tonight. So they did that, got it ready. I guess maybe they went away because I understand as they're heading for the Passover feast, they kind of were having a little bit of a fallout. They kind of were debating on who is the greatest. Maybe Peter thought he was the greatest. Maybe John, I don't know. And they were having this bit of dispute and they arrived together to where they're going to have the Passover meal. And as they get in there to have the meal, what was common practice was when you arrived in for the desert for a meal, there would be a servant who would remove your sandals and wash your feet. And there was no servant. And you can imagine the disciples saying, well, I'm certainly not going to wash anybody's feet. Hard lock. Don't think that's going to happen, do you? And just as they're sitting there like that, having pondered on that, Jesus gets up. And they think, what's he doing? And he goes and gets a, a bowl of water. And he puts a towel around his waist. They must have been absolutely gobsmacked. He starts going to them one after another and washing their feet. And it comes to Peter. Peter says, no, 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 you're never, and then, no, no, you're never going to do that to me. And Jesus said, well, if I can't do it to you, Peter, you have no part. So good old Peter said, well, if you're going to wash your feet, you better wash my head, my hands, everything. And Jesus said, no, it's not necessary. He said, uh, you understand later what I'm doing. He said, and, and I want you to think the way that I've served, that you would serve other people. He did say that amongst those that he loved, that actually even somebody whose feet he washed was one who was going to betray him. They're very sad about that. And then he said, come on, let's go and have the Passover meal. We're going to uh, share communion now. So, and after we've shared communion, there's... To an amazing low, this saviour who they entered Jerusalem with, maybe thinking he's going to set up his kingdom. And the story that's been sung about how Jesus was uh, betrayed and taken and crucified and how they must have watched on. They'd seen Jesus... Remember the time they were going to throw him off the cliff and he just walked for him more than once. And although he told them that was Jesus, that he was going to die, they always found it difficult to, to grasp. And now he was dead. How, how, how could that be? 
They followed him for three years. Where he slept, they slept. Where he ate, they ate. They did everything with him. And now they're behind closed doors for fear of the Jews. Well, it's uh, time for the ladies. Very bravely, they go down to the tomb. There's a group of ladies and they're taking spices to finish preparing the, the body. They, they don't know how. They're going to move this massive boulder that's been placed there. And as they arrive at the tomb, the boulder has been rolled away. It would seem at that point that Mary quickly runs back to the disciples to tell them. And while she's running back, the other disciples see this angel who says to them, why are you looking for the dead amongst the living? He's alive. So they run off. In the meantime, Mary Magdalene has got back to where Peter and John has and, and said to them, they've taken his body away. So Peter and John uh, rush down to the tomb. At the end, John's a, a little bit faster, but he doesn't go in. He, he kind of peeps into the tomb and, and he, he sees that the clothing just laying there, no body. Peter just comes behind him. Peter, don't stop. He goes straight in the tomb. And then John goes in the tomb. And the amazing thing as well, the nap came around his head, is folded and put to one side. And it says John is beginning to understand. And they leave the tomb and they go back. And as they get back and amongst the other disciples, um, Jesus suddenly stands amongst them. I, they were afraid, but I, 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 it's impossible to imagine what that must have been like. The saviour that they walked with was suddenly alive. He really was there. And later to Thomas, he said, look, see my hands. That's where they put the nails in. I'm real. I'm alive. And then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. He said to them, I want you to go back to Galilee, to the mountain there. I'm going to appear to you. And Paul suggests maybe that's, where 500 people were there when Jesus appeared there. And he says, all authority has been given to me now. Therefore, you go in that authority. I want you to tell everybody about what has happened. I want you to go and make disciples, people who will understand what you understand, people who will trust me like you trust me. I want you to go into every nation and do that. Baptizing in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And I will be with you always. Now we know that this story is true because over the years this has been passed on till eventually it reached us. Till we heard the story of the crucifixion that Jesus had died in our place. For me, some 60 years ago, when I first understood Jesus had died to, for me, and I prayed a simple prayer and asked Jesus to forgive me and come into my life. And as a fellowship, that's what we're experiencing, that new life. Because Jesus, when he came, he said, I'm come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Jesus is calling us to be free. Now, I think we settle sometimes for mediocre. And God doesn't want us to settle for mediocre. If you find there are things in your life, and we all have them, just keep looking to Jesus to deal with them. I was, I was reflecting some uh, years ago. I think I mentioned it in a recent Bible study, how when the hurricane came, um, in whenever it was, um, when the Seven Oaks in Seven Oaks became one oak because the other six all collapsed. The reason that they fell down was because the week beforehand it had rained and the ground was saturated. Now I want to say to you, in the battles that we face, 
We've got to keep soaking the ground with prayer. Because God wants to take us deeper and deeper into a relationship with him. And you don't have to be afraid because he said, I will be with you forever. I'm just going to pray. Lord, we come to you today. We thank you that we've been reminded of Jesus, his resurrection, and how that he brought us life and freedom. We come to you with our lives, and if God's spoken to you about some area of your life that he wants to address, don't be afraid. It's part of the journey. Just bring it to him. Keep soaking it in prayer, because gonna, God is going to sort that out. Maybe you haven't ever asked Jesus into your life. Let me pray a simple prayer like I prayed those years ago. If you want to do this and ask Jesus into your life, just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died on that cross for me to pay for my sin, my failure. Would you forgive me? I'm making a choice today to turn away from all that I know that's wrong and turn to you. I want you to be my Lord and my Saviour. Jesus, I ask you that you will come and fill me with your Holy Spirit, empowering me to live out this life. Lord, I just pray over this whole gathered congregation I say Holy Spirit would you come come precious Holy Spirit breathe on your church afresh we need you Lord we need you Lord come and empower us each one to live our lives daily for you because of Jesus, say, come, Holy Spirit, we receive afresh from you.